getting a bit full around here. <clears throat> well, as you saw in the intro, I now have two Olympus cameras, and there's an unusual story behind this. So I'll tell you about that now. What happened was I was working on one of my videos and taking some shots with this camera and suddenly whenever I put the card goes in here, whenever I put the card in here it wouldn't re it said it was locked or something it was like uh, right protect I thought well there's a lever in there that it pushes when the right protect is working and I checked the card, the card's okay. I had another card, I put the both two cards in 25,000 times, but it still didn't work. And so I thought, well, we'll be down, I'm gonna have to get another camera. <laughs> and so I thought, I better get one quick because otherwise I won't be able to do any, anything at all around here. And so I went onto eBay and I had a quick look and there, right, first thing that came up with the buy now on it was this, just been listed, and um, it was £49 for an EP1 uh, with 1800 shutter goes on it. It's like brand new, so there's no wear on it at all. So I thought, well, that's a good deal. I used to have one of these years ago, and um, I know when you use them they all get worn so this is like hasn't been used at all in fact it came in a brand new box it came with none of the stuff had been opened the, um, the charger the battery everything was brand new and I think what must have happened is the guy must have come into the shop brought the camera back and they must have given him another body out of a, a, a brand new box put his body in the box and just forgot about it probably and now they were flogging off you know just what was left. So I got all this good stuff, which I needed another battery, it was quite good that. And um, I didn't need the charger, but the extra battery was good. And um, it had, the, the only problem it had was this IS light flashing. And I don't use IS because I, all, this, this, this camera is just a studio camera, I just use it on the tripod. Because I found that if I, if, if you, I try to take photographs without a tripod, I just end up not being happy with the results. There's always a tiny, tiny bit of uh, camera shake on every photo you take, just about. And so at my age, I've sort of said, well, I'm just going to use a tripod now. So the IS is always off, so that's good for me. <clears throat> but I have found that this, it's a bit annoying having this IS light if you're composing. If you're composing, you've got this IS light flashing all the time, so, I don't know. You kind of move with it, don't you? But the reason I got the EP one instead of the EPL one was because I felt I needed a bigger screen. I was actually starting to look at the, um, the Olympus was it M1, EM1, or something, M1, uh, single lens reflex, I was kind of looking at that, but they were a bit more expensive, so this one gets this slightly bigger screen, and although it's more difficult to operate in many ways, because this one has a special button that you press to zoom in, this is a zoom to zoom in button, you can see the difference in the screen size, it doesn't look much here, but it's quite a bit. Um, this one has a bit of a convoluted way. It took me a long time, days in fact, to find out how to zoom, zoom our manual focus with one of these lenses on it. But overall, it's quite good because you've got the, um, the you've got the control buttons are easier. You don't have to press, you don't have to work with the menu system so much. So there are some advantages to it. What was funny about it was that everything worked except if I put in 
if I put this um, this particular adapter for Micro Four Thirds on it, I just get a black screen with all of these Miranda lenses and, and this particular adapter which take this. I just get a black screen, and so I just don't understand that. I can't see any reason why that should be. So it's kind of brought me to the conclusion that now I have two cameras. Now this one's got image stabilization, so this one is good for using for my outdoor photography. And so I've got a collection of lenses here and an adapter. These lenses here cover the full focal length um, of lenses that you need. This is a 24 millimeter. This is a this is a 14 to 45 millimeter standard lens that comes with it. This then is a 35 to 70 zoom which is good for boating shots and this is a 70 to 210 zoom which is also good for my boating shots. So this whole kit is, um, is quite good for boating and it means that I won't need to take my studio camera with my good uh, Carl Zeiss Jenner best lens and everything. I won't I have to take that to sea and drop it in the water or something like that. And so I'm, um, I'm happy that I ended up getting the two cameras. And it was really just by accident. And the timing of it was remarkable that this camera was for sale in exact, that exact moment. Because I hadn't seen one. Uh, as Last time I looked when I looked for this one, I hadn't seen one like that at that price. I'd seen them at that price old and worn out. But the, the, for a brand new one, it's... Um, pretty remarkable even if the IS doesn't work. Now <clears throat> being able to have two cameras has I've realized that now I can actually photograph my cameras because if you've only got one camera you can never photograph what you're taking except on the video. Now I can do still photographs of, um, of the two cameras if I want to and I did um, I did end up photographing some. I was interested in how <clears throat> this particular lens um, would work. This lens, and I'll show you the other one. And this lens. This is a Jupiter 8. And um, I'll show you some pictures of it on, on that camera. It looks really, really nice on that camera. goes with it so tiny, it goes with it absolutely perfectly. And the only trouble being that when you focus this thing, when you focus it, um, you, have to, you have to set the aperture before you focus, because when you focus, if you turn the aperture it turns the focus as well, unless you hold the focus with your finger, but you know, you can probably do that. It's not that great on the tripod in the studio situation. And so, but this lens is remarkably sharp. It is a really, really, really sharp lens. And so, if I wanted to, I could use that and you set it. Um, I could use it on that camera, but I'm probably not going to because the other lenses are equally good and I have good lenses for that camera and the, the standard lens in a normal shooting situation is pretty good too. So I probably don't need um, 50mm except for studio work really. I probably don't need it if I'm going on the boat or anything like that. And again, it's a lovely lens and I, I don't really, I don't really want to deprive the camera of it in a permanent way because otherwise I end up you know it does go with the camera and this one although it looks rather nice <laughs> and it looks very nice I'll show you a picture of this lens on that camera it looked really really nice and it it's not up to scratch really it's nowhere near this and it's not acceptable really it's a bit like a Leica you know of a similar era the 3G era Leicas they also were pretty lousy lenses in comparison of course to the Summicron F2 <clears throat> okay 
now I did I did an unboxing and I'll show you a bit of that <coughs> I won't show you all of it <coughs> I'll just show you a bit of it and um, what happened was is the gentleman I got the Voigtlander from he didn't send me the land so he sent me the land he said he was going to send me a gift and when I opened the gift I found inside a Practica uh, very, very similar to the MTL3 here. Now the MTL3 is working, this one. You can hear the slow shutters working well and everything's working. But I have noticed that my success rate with these particular Practicas with the metal focal plane shutter, the 50 years old, um, is not that great it's not that good and I've had a few of them where they arrived they seem to be almost working and then they just stopped working straight away you know they're just like locked up and I couldn't free them up the mirror jammed up all sorts of stuff and um, this particular camera I uh, operated a few times quite a few times actually trying to get the lens um, which the aperture wasn't really trying to get that working and in the end the shutter just locked up and we saw it and that was the end of it and so i can't really recommend these particular practica metal shutter camera bodies in this day and age because they just seem to be uh, unreliable as they got old now this one that i had it was a it had a meter and a battery in it. This one doesn't have a meter. It, it, it does actually, but it, this one had a big battery in it and the battery had been leaking. And so having that acidic air around the metal shutter and the components inside, it doesn't take much to get a little bit of corrosion or something to get a little bit seized up. And you know, it's gonna lock up on you. And so that's a, one reason not to buy um, uh, electrical camera that's that's old and because they've all been stored you're lucky if it's been stored properly actually and uh, a good reason why uh, to buy an old mechanical camera and I haven't had any of these problems with uh, older style Practica I've got a few of these uh, and these all seem to be it's a cloth focal plane shutter these all seem okay and there's no batteries in them and so if I was looking for a Practica camera for my collection I'd really look at this or the much newer ones that are in, from the 1980s that have been well looked after in, in mint condition those ones will probably be okay i did get a good when i bought this lens this this count this lens is from probably from close to 1990 uh, towards the end uh, maybe 80 between 85 and, and and 90 and these cameras seem to be still ticking out along all right if they've been looked after if they're in good condition okay I'll put a few photos up and um, I'll leave you with that but uh, thank you for watching and I feel that I've done enough videos to cover what um, what I've been up to I wanted to make some video I always when I do a project I always do a little bit of a story about how I did it and what I used and it's the kind of like how I made the um, cameras of the GDR documentary I suppose because the cameras of the GDR documentary is uh, uh, consists of a number of components it consists of the, 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 the movies the video of it um, the thir 13 chapters of it and then it consists of the black and white still photographs that's a collection I actually made those into a calendar um, and um, so I could you know see a finished work of it and then it consists of the final thing, which is, is how I made it, which is what this last, these last couple of videos were all about. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I, I really hope that you watch all the videos from the beginning because it is a, a complete work and 
unless you watch all the videos, you won't really understand exactly what I'm talking about because each chapter builds upon what I've said in the previous chapters. It's all one video, really. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and um, goodness knows what I'm going to produce next, but there will be some more videos coming on some interesting subjects and probably to do with photography at this stage. Thank you very much. Thank you.